Hey everyone. I saw today the temperatures going down and I started to think about breaking out my hot teas. I drink some cold tea in the summer and usually I do that in a cold press where I basically just put the tea into a glass container and let it sit. It's refrigerator tea and it just kind of sits in the refrigerator and then it, um, you know, you just pour it out as you want it. But I have been a tea drinker since ever since I can remember. My parents were tea drinkers, uh, my mother in particular, um, her parents, her grandparents, you know, they were Irish and Scottish. And so they were tea drinkers. And we always drink green tea every single night, every meal. <laughs> we had it, we had it for what we called our supper. Most people call their dinner. Supper was usually a lighter meal for us, but tea was always part of the, the servings. And what we did, we just took our, she had a teapot that she used for years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> and we put our water in the teapot. We boiled up that water. We put loose leaf tea. We only use loose leaf tea. We put the loose leaf tea in. And then when it was ready, after it had steeped, we were able to pour it out. And every, and usually we made two pots at night. <laughs> um, there was enough of us in the family that we would have two pots. But probably about 10 years ago, I started looking at what other kinds of tea could you use? And I started thinking about, I had heard about Essiac tea that largely comes out of Canada. Um, they grow it, uh, the Native American uh, and the Native indigenous population uses it. And it is said to cure cancer or at least help during cancer. My father had cancer. And so my, you know, my sister had heard about this tea and I started looking into it and it looked pretty interesting, but it got me on the road. So it's always that one thing that starts you looking into something else. It got me on the road to asking myself what other kinds of herbal teas in particular, you know, might there be out there that I could, that I could start to use for anything that I might have. And what I'm really focused on lately is just detox tea. There's so much stuff in our environment. There's so much that we're exposed to that in our foods, everything, right? So I have been looking at like, what teas am I going to start doing, especially this winter now that it's warmer and I actually want tea more <laughs> um, to do for my, and I usually do it at night, evening teas. And the good thing is most of the teas that you would take are herbal anyway. Um, so you're not going to probably have a caffeine problem or anything like that. Some of the supplies you need is you need a pretty nice teapot. Um, but, and I have a little basket because when you're dealing with herbal teas, um, you want like a bigger basket, not just a small little holder, because you've got to get the mixture in here and then you soak this in the teapot and that gets all of the different herbs soaked into the water. So you want something a little bit bigger like this as a tea basket. And this whole thing then, I can also set this in a mug, by the way, like if I have a bigger mug, I can just set this whole thing in there and pour the water over the top of it. Uh, but typically I like to have my teapot and soak this thing in the teapot. And also this is nice because then you don't have to strain it afterwards. It's already pre-strained. Now I do have a tea right now that I, I'm just starting to look at using and I just got it, got it in the mail. Um, and it's a pine needle tea. Pine needle tea came highly recommended. I've done a lot of research on it. It has shikamite, but this is very fine. Um, and the, depending on the, I don't know if you can see that, that's very fine. Uh, that may or may not work in this particular strainer. I might have to find in like a cheesecloth bag or something to use when I do this one. Um, pine needle tea uh, is recommended as part of the detox. So several of the ones I use are actually for detox, as I mentioned, and that's going to be a new one I'm adding in. So alfalfa, for example, you can actually buy alfalfa tablets if you want to take it as a supplement. But yeah, the stuff the cows eat. <laughs> Um, I put into the tea and that's actually good for kind of detoxing through the body and there's all kinds of them. So I will publish at some point out a whole list of the various ones the, the information's a bit hard to find. So I've had to do a combination of like, look up all the different things and then muscle test them for some of their uses. But I'll tell you, my mother also knew, and there's some home remedy, uh, type of naturopathic uh, books out there that I've been researching over the years and kitchen remedies is what they call them. And you can use like thyme 
all this kind of stuff, right? But I, what I, one of the things I do try to do is I do try to buy from small distributors. I primarily focus on where I can get it in the, you know, North America, primarily the States. And I'm looking for people who hand grow as much as I can. They can't always, I mean, certain climates, you can't grow everything, but where I'm looking at some of the things like red clover and alfalfa, I will usually buy those from people in Michigan, actually in Wisconsin, because that's where you get a lot of the red clover in particular. And I use a lot of red clover. Red clover is very good for cleaning the blood as well, but it tastes good. <laughs> so one of the things I had to really get used to was that some of these teas can be more bitter. And in the, you know, messing around with trying to get my proportions right and things, I just did it all by intuition. Uh, what do I need today? Which one do I need today? Muscle tested. And then would go in and, and say like how much, right? And none of these are really going to, you know, some of them come with a little bit of precaution, but most of them do not. So that's got to be part of your research as well as uh, making sure that you're taking the right amounts. Um, another one that always tastes good is eucalyptus. So I keep all mine in, I buy them in bulk and then I keep them in ball jars. So this is like up on my shelf and I try to label them a little night more. <laughs> so they're legible anyway. Um, and then I kind of go through and I pick which ones I think I need for the day. And I have my little cheat sheet. Um, blue cohosh, is, these are just ones I happen to pull out. Like blue cohosh is another one that I use. Um, this is dandelion root. Yep, you've probably heard of dandelions being used for different stuff. This is dandelion root. This is actually good for second chakra work and root chakra work. Um, so also some of the ones I pick is because I, I need extra support on a chakra. For example, we have a lot of uh, lower chakra damage in our society today. So sometimes we're also trying to get energetic support down to those areas, but that's also a good detoxifier. Now, one of the other benefits that doing these teas is if you have allergies and I've tested this um, with not just myself, but with other people, one of the things that it's like herbalists may recommend is if you're allergic and you know what you're allergic to, part of the way you can build some immunity to that is to actually um, take the plant and make a tea out of it and drink that. Now, my dog had one of my dogs had horrible, horrible, horrible allergies, like some of the worst allergies I've ever seen. He would almost chew his feet off. He was so itchy. Um, so within about six months of having him, I just couldn't see him suffer because he was getting yeast infections in his feet and things like that. Because one thing leads to another, they chew, they get stuff up in their feet, and then they get yeast infection or other infections. And that's just no way to live. <laughs> so I took him to a dermatologist, a vet dermatologist, and was trying to isolate like what exactly is he allergic to well it turns out he was super allergic to winter rye he was also a little bit allergic to human dander which he, you know we never think about we think about we're allergic to pet dander <laughs> now, i'm not sure i'm gonna put pet dander in a tea but i might take some of their hair if i were allergic to my dog or cat i might actually take and put their hair into a tea and then drink the you know it would help but <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably wash it first a little bit, I'd clean it up a little bit or right after they had a bath or something. I don't know. Never tried that one, but that could be an option. Something I might mess around with. I don't have pet allergies, fortunately. Um, so from that standpoint, they say like, take some of the like bristle brush here is one that pe people can be allergic to. I happen to have developed in Arizona an allergy to citrus trees, which I did not know. And I moved into a neighborhood a couple of years ago and it's full of citrus trees of all kinds. And I have some in my own yard and I sit out in the morning and especially during blossom season, I'm, I get very stuffy. So I have plans this year because the blossom season is my worst. I have plans this year that I'm starting to pull leaves. I'm going to do my own and pulling leaves off my citrus trees and drying them. So I'm getting them down to dry and then I'm going to use those starting about January um, to, to actually start to pull in um, some of that, that naturopathy. Um, but my dog, when he got his allergy review and we found out what was there and what the big ones were, the doctor 
that's all they did. They didn't really give medication, like typical pharmaceutical medication. What they did was they mixed a tincture of all the stuff that he was allergic to, and it was in a little vial, it was a liquid. And I had put that as a drop underneath his tongue at least once a day. And within about six months, that dog did not express allergies. And I didn't even have to keep giving that tincture. Um, much, I did it every now and then. I didn't do it as a daily thing. I mean, he really hated it because it's like, oh, I gotta do this thing again. And he'd go run outside, you know. Um, <laughs> but he was funny about it. It, was a, it became a little game. Time for your drops. Nope, not taking my drops. But it really helped him. And I swear to this day that that if I was ever sold on like using these products this way, like in for me for teas, I was sold because the difference it made in that dog's life was night and day. Like he had a life after that. He really didn't have to go in for anything allergy. I kept his drops refilled on a certain basis um, just so that I had them. And then, like I said, I didn't necessarily do them every day, but I was still doing them a couple of times a week just to keep that level up there. And huge difference, huge difference. It's one of the best decisions I made was to do that for him. So, you know, having said all of that, um, kind of to wrap it up here, what I would say is, you know, there is, there are growers out there that have sort of pre-done all this work to say, hey, you know, these are things that are good, for example, for chakra. These are things that are good for feminine problems, as an example. Um, trust the good ones. Like you can go and you can say, like, am I going to, am I going to be able to find somebody that maybe grows organic? I did find one, I'll just throw it on the screen, um, a small grower. Because the one that I had been buying for, I'm having a hard time finding. <laughs> so uh, I was, I had been looking for another one. So for example, this one I'm found, and I think this one's pretty good. They have a chakra tea collection. I muscle tested it. This one tests pretty high. And they have like, this would be your first root chakra. This would be licorice in here for your sixth chakra. So they have some of these out here like this and they've got them pre-mixed as well. So they taste good. So you don't have to do it all on your own. I just like the crafting of it myself, which is why I do it. But if you can find a good grower where they are pre-setting what the mixtures need to be for the purpose that you want them for, I'd say do that. Other than like me, I have a citrus allergy. It makes more sense for me just to get it off my own trees because <laughs> it's unique to what the, what the dirt is here and things like that. Cause that's one of the other things that can play in. Um, you can have like a citrus allergy with different um, extremes based on where that citrus is growing because what comes up through the soil also affects what's in the final product and in the plant and the blossoms and fruit. And I do like citrus, especially grapefruit. So for me, I have grapefruit trees, but I sit outside in the morning. So I'm going to have to start to build my immunity up for that. There are also some products in the market that I have used that have a lot of like herbs in them that I've found to be helpful. One in particular for me is um, there's an isogenic set of, of liquids. One is a cleanse. One is um, uh, called Ionic Supreme. And those have all kinds of different herbal things in them. I found just taking like an ounce of that a day, each one helped me with my, my seasonal allergies. I'm not exactly sure. Cause there's so many things in there. I'm not exactly sure which one <laughs> helped me. Um, but I do know now what the driver of my allergy is and it's the citrus trees. Cause I noticed that. And when I moved into this new neighborhood that has way more citrus than the rest of the city, um, I really started to feel every morning I'd walk the dogs and I'd be like, that's what it is. It's the citrus. They're in bloom. Now I know. And um, now I can take care of it myself. So that's what I wanted to share today. Think about really just think about what kind of um, natural medicine you can bring into your life through plants. Plants are terrific sources. They've been centuries in use. You don't want to be you know, indiscriminate and, you know, take some caution. This guess is the word I would say, use some caution, 
But if you're buying your product and, and eat, like even when I buy my bulk, I'm buying from people I've checked out. Um, I validate them with my own intuition, but I've done the research as well online to say, you know, is this got, does this grower, does this distributor, and I try to go to growers as much as I can um, because they know their product. They, and, I, and where do I want like some of this stuff to have been grown so that I get that soil aspect and that you know, environmental aspect into them. So I do my research that way. And then once I find, you know, something, by the way, Etsy does also have a lot of tea distributors on there and you could, you know, that's where I had to get my pine tea, my pine needle tea. I don't have pine trees here. <laughs> I do in Wisconsin, but again, it's the type of pine that you want because they all have different um, combinations and things. I was looking for one that had shikamite in it at a fairly good quantity. And so that's where I went out and did the research on that. It can take some time to figure out which ones you need. But if, like I said, if you go to a grower that has sometimes pre done the packaging and they've said like, okay, this one's for like your first chakra, this one's for your second chakra, then you'll get the support for that part of the body um, that you need. So hope this was helpful and happy tea drinking. <laughs>